that's just not us. Cool. Greetings, everyone. Hello, Internet. Welcome along to our first live stream about board games. Welcome. Uh, my name is Mr. Chris. Uh, we are uh, a group of compatriots, all passionate about uh, board games and anything geeky and nerdy alike. Um, so here we are. Uh, hopefully uh, everyone out there in the internet land is doing really well. Um, I'm going to get some of the, uh, the boring stuff out of the way and then we can kick off with some of the fun stuff. So without further ado, uh, we are Diary of a Lincoln Geek and we will just have a quick minute about our sponsor. Thank you very much to full uh, by fullbodyarmors.com for sponsoring us. Um, if you like to the look of some of their cosplay outfits, they do some really cool ones. You've got the, uh, the new pre-order that's available for the War Machine Mark I armor. And I believe, George, you just told me prior, prior to stream, they're also looking at doing a Spider-Man armor suit, aren't they? Yes, like, like with the Exo Falcon suit, they are. it is yeah. currently in design phase, so keep, keep an eye on this cool. place. That's yeah. cool. So check out buyfullbodyarmors.com, and if you do want to place an order, make sure you use that all-important uh, hashtag D-O-A-L-G for an awesome discount. Anyway, without further ado... Let's introduce you to the team. So, I am Mr. Chris. I am the founder. Um, I'm a bit of a geek, without a doubt. Uh, you know, I even recently put that I am a geek on a job job description for uh, for a CV, and I got the job. Did it help? Well, it helps. Yeah. Wow, there we go. It helps. <laughs> yes, um, I've been into board games for well, God knows how long. I've been. I'm a nerd. Let's face it. I, I was born a nerd, so uh, nearly forty years. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, but without further ado, George, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I, this is my first proper introduction on the channel, also, though you'll no doubt be seeing some of the videos c coming out soon, but I am the rules lawyer. I have been known to dissect a rule book in half and in half again. Uh, I have been known to antagonise people with my pedanticness. <laughs> never, that's a, uh, never, never happened. Never. Uh, there is a reason what, why I am the one that is always consulted when things are, need a, some sort of ruling, and I like to think that I get it right most of the time. I have no, been known to troll forums, and I do enjoy it. <laughs> and he reads rule books in his spare time, so, you know. <laughs> yeah, it, even the impenetrable ones. But we, that's a video for another day. <laughs> bedtime, bedtime meeting. <laughs> yeah, 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 without a doubt. Yes, I am oh. Georgie, Georgie O, the rules lawyer, I'll say. Yeah, Mr. Georgie For... O. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Dan Leakey, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm... Dan Leakey, obviously, <laughs> and I think I get the prize for the nerdiest uh, picture there. Just want to say that. So if it's a geek off competition, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> There we go. See, the rest of you gone for kind of like nice photos or artsy photos. Uh, Chris looks like he's an R&B kind of rapper or whatever. I don't know. Each other. <laughs> and years helps with that. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of true. <laughs> well, 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 I just look like I know nothing. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, which is pretty true. I, I know a little bit about board games, so I've got probably an unhealthy obsession with them, as you can see by the, some of the display behind me so yes. uh, yep i am a board game geek and that's why i'm on this uh this video <laughs> yes you are and you're one of the original founders along with myself cool yeah yes yeah. yes and can't then, forget our founding members yep. yeah yeah this, this, yeah, whole, this whole show is members. partly my fault <laughs> <laughs> yes it is <laughs> and we also have the noobs guys you want to introduce yourselves Yes, I'm Rebecca. Um, I am a board game person uh, and have been interested in board games for probably about five or six years now. Um, and it's all his fault. Um, <laughs> Sorry. There's <laughs> always someone to blame. Um, yeah, so I'll, I'll hand over to... Yeah, I'm, I'm Gregor uh, and uh, I'm just here to be a beautiful face. That's it, really. Uh, oh, oh, the camera didn't well. break, so you're good. Uh, thanks. Uh, did the lighting brilliant. uh anyway uh yeah i i also like board games which kind of helps uh and yeah i have a particular liking for things that are abstract or weird or cheap and preferably all three 
lightweight games as well yeah. that you're, you're quite into. Uh, lightweight games. See, there's nothing wrong with a lightweight game. There never, never is. Yeah. There's a reason why we've got a tray of them in, in our coffee table. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you just want a quick game rather yeah. than an in-depth yeah, you know, exactly. Anyway, you just want an appetizer hour. instead of a full course. It's fine. It's just yeah, exactly. so, sometimes you need a bit of a, cl- a bit of a palate cleanser between big cleanser. boxes. Yeah. Is, is the tapas of board games? <laughs> yes, tapas I like board games. I like that. Yeah, yeah I'm gonna write that down. Yeah, right? yeah. Keeping up. Yeah, yeah. Tapas of board games. You yeah, copyright that. That's a good phrase. We should. Uh... <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That's our thing up in the corner. One. <laughs> so it's a bit like the old quotes from when we did some of the early video game uh, board game reviews down where we had the quote tally. yeah we should we should have got loyalties from jim henson for that or whatever <laughs> he did yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> the game showed no loyalty to him <laughs> yeah true another story brilliant. brilliant so um but very quickly before we move on to the next section uh i just want to um make a comment to to anyone out there who's listening and watching uh we are an interactive show uh, in future, there will be elements where you guys at home can join in. Uh, but for the moment, because it's our, our first new show, we are going to be kind of running the content. Uh, but we always, always like involvement. We've got George, our moderator. He will be looking at your comments um, and we'll be responding. And if there's anything of a particular interest, uh, he will mention, up, mention it as we're going through uh, all our relevant um conversations we're going to be having this evening so do do chat along do say even if it's just a hi say hi and we will say hi back so without further ado we will move on so let's talk board games what are people playing at the moment so um i believe there's quite a few of us you know here playing a varying selection of games at this moment in time um rebecca um, yes. I think we're going to be covering Isle of Cats, is that right? Yes, that is a game. Uh, we got it quite a while ago, but I've only managed to get it out to the table recently. Um, and it is quite good. So um, let's get into it, shall we? Yeah, yeah cool. Um, so um, first first impressions. So you take the box out, you open it, you look at the, you look at the components, you think, is it worth my money? Are these components nice? They are very nice. Isle of Cats has really nice quality components. Um, it's got you know wooden tokens, thick player boards, you know e- everything you would want in a nice component. Uh, downside is it doesn't have a box insert, but depends. Oh, okay. You can always get custom ones, can't you? So yeah, you can get custom go. ones. Uh, some people, <laughs> some people get quite funny about their box inserts. So yeah. you know if if that's something mm-hmm. that bothers some you. People. Yeah, yeah, like me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if that's something that you're not the only one. You're really not the only one. <laughs> no, no it is important. If if you can't if you can't store all the pieces neatly, then it, yeah. you you got to allow yourself another ten minutes to sort it out when you yeah. open it. I mean, yeah. it does. It comes yeah. with a lot of plastic bags, so you can separate everything and make your setup really quick yep. the following time. But if you are particular about box inserts, you might want to have a look at that for this game. Um, yeah. In terms that... of the actual, oh, sorry. No, I was going to say, you think that's bad, Chris. Do you remember how I stored all my Battlestar pieces? You know, yeah, those plastic so containers that normally normal people put like screws in and like, you know, <laughs> nails and stuff. I've just got all the different <laughs> kind of counters and character sheets and stuff. You think like this? Yes, like that. <laughs> but do, do normal people just keep screws and nails at home? Is that that's what they do, yeah, apparently. <laughs> No, no, it's no, one, no, one of those things where they pretend right. they do DIY. Yeah, I've, never, I've never been to someone's Lego. house and they're like, think... oh, I've got a shelf here full of screws and nails. Do you want to have a look? I think, um, yeah. Like, I've just got tons of pieces, like dice and stuff. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. It's the, the next one. Anyway, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Please carry on. No, that's fine. Um, no, no, so... that's what it's all about. It's a bit of fun. Out of the uh, out of the box, Isle of Cats uh, plays between one and four players. Uh, you can get an expansion to go up to six. So if you have a bigger group, maybe good for you. Um, I have played. Uh, I played on my own, but I played a regular two player game rather than the solo mode. Um, okay. And I I chose to do that mostly because we were supposed to be playing it together, and then there was a scheduling conflict, and I'd already set it up for two players. So I thought, why not? Yep. Um, yep. So I had a lovely Everyone time. loves playing with themselves from time to time. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's really it's really straightforward to play. Um, there is also a family mode, so if you've got younger kids or you know something like that, could be yeah. really good for them. 
Um, and basically it's a sort of kind of a card draft and tile placement kind of game. Really nice artwork. If you like yeah, cats, you'll probably really nice. like it. Um, yeah, that's kind of all I really made notes about. It's really straightforward. I would play it again. Uh, out of six, I'd probably give it a four. Yeah, that's no, no, nice. I like the fact that some of these games have a solo mode. I think solo mode is so important sometimes um, uh, with the games, especially when you're probably investing, you know, mm. above, you know, the kind of bracket of 30 to 40 pound games. You, you know, there are going to be instances where, you know what, you know, I want to just play a game and what's got solo mode. That hasn't, that hasn't. Yeah. Before you know it, you go, oh, for God, crying out loud. So it's nice that, you know, game designers are actually starting to put in solo modes because, you know, it happens. I would say it's becoming more and more common and I would say I I love a so, solo mode just for the, those days where you, I mean for me it's it's great last t- time I had some builders around and you're in the house and you've got not a lot else to do just mm. crack out a game with a solo mode and just cr- churn through it so yeah. <laughs> yeah I really enjoyed I can't remember if it's an official uh, mode or whether it was on BGG but I did play terraforming Mars solo and I just had such a good time <laughs> just yeah. like perfecting my little oh, colony it was lovely that'd be interesting yeah so sound really cool yeah, yeah. cool yeah. well so now that's that's really good to know um and and is this does this was this a kickstarter you initially backed or was this uh, one you it just was used? A Kickstarter a long, long time ago. Um, we didn't back it ourselves, though. Your parents got it for you for your birthday. Yes. Um, I don't know if they backed it initially or not. Um, oh, what I failed to mention is that it's by the City of Games. Yeah, okay. I meant to uh, say that at the beginning. It is available, I think, normal retail now. I'm not sure on the price. Okay. Um, well, I'm sure people out there can Google it, you know, Google it if they like the look of it. If you like cats. And you, you know, yeah. like board games, then there's one for you. Yeah, and I know I, I, just because there's cats in the title, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I presume it's about that. cats. You don't really... Yeah, it is about cats. So the the sort of there is a sort of a story in the rule book, but I didn't read too much into it. Um, but essentially, the the goal that that you have is to rescue cats from an island. So you bring them onto your ship to rescue them from the evil force, which is the the turn tracker. <laughs> I thought you were going to say it was like dogs or something. With the, uh... No, it's, I don't think it's dogs, unfortunately. But he is. There's a little uh, little pirate ship on the turn tracker, which is the evil guy that I cannot remember the name of off the top of my head. So you've got to rescue as many cats as you can. You get things like bonuses for collecting groups of cats of the same colour and that sort of thing. Okay. Cool. Families of cats. Looks good. Uh, I look forward to giving it a go. Maybe on a games night sometime. Yeah. All right. So, shall, shall we move on to our next board game? So, George Mr. E. George E.O., you've been playing Eclipse, Second Dawn for the Galaxy. Yes, it is Second Dawn for the Galaxy. Um, Second Dawn yeah. for the Galaxy. My bad. Yeah. Yes, yes. I Don't get worry. the staff these days. I know. It's so awful, isn't it, Dan? <laughs> things, things are different but, in my day. My day. <laughs> I was saying, and this one, Chris, is all, all, all your fault. Although I think it's technically your fault, isn't it, Dan? Because that Cylons gr- game, game day. It's a, Ooh. It's a Cylons game day. Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> yeah, that's what started yes. it all, but that's another story. Yeah, but that's yes. another story for another day, yes. <laughs> yes, I was first introduced to Eclipse on a wonderful game day, and we had a rather large all-day game game of it, and I have loved the game ever since. It is a day um, event, isn't it? I agree with that, but it's good. It's very good. Especially when you're teaching noobs, it's mm-hmm. it, it's not the lightest of games to get into. However, no, it's not. However, <laughs> yes, there is a however, George. Uh, as big box 4x games go, it is fabulous. Uh, I've loved the gameplay, and this is the Kickstarter reboot of the classic Eclipse uh, by okay. Lauter Pelli, and with its designer, whose name I will not even try to say because I'm clearly not Finnish and I have no idea how to pronounce their names and I don't want to insult them by really messing it up yeah. uh, but Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy amazing reboot by the original game designer loads of great balancing up- updates to all the races um, I could wax lyrical about this I have waxed lyrical about this we have <laughs> recorded me waxing lyrical about this uh, and there will be a number of videos being really 
released once they uh, escaped the editing room. No waxing on, onto YouTube. Um, but um, as demonstrated in, in some of the pictures, they have really thought about the box solution to this, which is probably one of the biggest downsides of the original Eclipse. Yeah, without they, a doubt. With tokens everywhere, the game took half an hour to just set out before. And it certainly did. Now it, you, it's set up easily in te 10 minutes. And oh, oh yeah, we've already got our first comment from my delightful wife was asking me to explain what a 4X game is. So <laughs> I, was X... I was trying to Google it off the side. I'm like, I know that's not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, no. That's why I have my pen up. But yeah. I, you kept talking. So is I it thought, explanation, it. exploration, expansion, something like that? Yeah, so e exploration, expansion, exploitation, mm -hmm. and extermination. There we go. So it's basically oh, world, yeah. world, world, world building and domination at its best. I yeah. have a number of these style of games in my collection. This is probably my favourite, but I have got a couple, of, couple uh, that are coming close. Uh, mm -hmm. Most notably Dominant Species, one which I really need to get out and play more often. Um, yeah. But yeah, this it they've just done a wonderful job balancing everything with this version. Yeah. It's it plays much better. It's the design has been really thought through, and I think it's been br been brilliant. Yeah. So we played Chris and I. I played this on um, Monday when we, yeah, after we did, yeah. after we did our videos on the bank holiday, and it's it's just as good as it ever was. And I think the balance features have really helped. Uh, one of them in particular really helped Chris, who was really not having luck it on the day, which is now that you get get a bit little extra economy boost for passing first during the game. It just helps yeah. neutralise some of the worst of the random kicking the nads that can yeah. sometimes happen with these sorts of games when exactly. you get the wrong explorations. Does, yeah. does it still have the plant people? It, it yeah. does still have the plant people, oh, and Chris plant was the plant people. plant people. I was the plant people, yes. Yeah. Oh, I've got, so, I've got like, I've still got PTSD from our last game, George. Never trust, <laughs> never trust a plant person. Yeah. <laughs> so, so guys, so if you are interested in learning more about uh, Eclipse: Second Dawn of the Galaxy, uh, we are going to be releasing, I think, three different videos: an in-depth look at the miniatures, an in-depth look at some of the new uh, mechanics, and of course, some of those all-important new space saver trays that you can see in that amazing picture. So if you uh, keep a look out for those in the coming months, because they will be released very soon. Without further ado, shall we move on? Unless anyone's got anything else they want to say about Eclipse? Um, nothing apart from buy it, it's amazing. I wish, <laughs> yes. I, I, wish I could play it more often. How it's, much does um, it cost? Um, it has, I would say it has only just been, this edition has only just been released on retail. Uh, I bought it direct from the publisher. Uh, I'm sure it will be cheaper in, in the coming still, months as it goes out. But this is over a hundred quid. We'll leave it at that. It's not. It's it's not is, but this is. <laughs> but this does incorporate a lot of the expansions from the original material. So if you think that this is buying a full big box game that has a whole load of expansion material built into it already, it is. Yeah. And the amount of miniatures you get for this, it's good value for money. Oh yeah. But but still it's the first, not, not cheap. There's still the first edition out there, which will be a lot cheaper now. I imagine the second is out. Yeah. If you can get hold of it. Yeah, I if suppose it's not in print. It, yeah. It's not in print anymore, actually, is it? I could be wrong. No, exactly. It's not in print no, anymore. But, uh, but there will be copies floating out there in board game uh, clubs and, and groups. So if you see a copy and you want to get it, go give it a go. Great. But one big tip I would suggest, if you, if you, if you can get hold of the acrylic trays, to help keep your pieces in place, they're a must. Because oh, there's like 50 keys on your, on your player mat, isn't there? And if you knock it everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. As, they're, they're really as you can see in, in the image, they've really thought that through in this edition. It's all yeah. been designed and it does work really well. Yeah, yeah. So it's a wonderful game. It's uh, well balanced and it's a game where you can win by being really aggressive or not getting a single fight. It's uh, yeah. really well exactly. balanced. It's, you can be yeah. purely diplomatic and still win. So it's pretty yeah. good. Yes, curse April, curse April and her <laughs> sneaky April hiding. Did. April, did, yeah. Yeah. April wins every game without ever getting in a single fight. Yeah. She just she just makes us all dance for the puppet man's pasta, master. Yeah. Puppet master. Exactly. There we go. Yeah, that's a thing. 
cracking game. That's anyway. probably when the review comes out, your people will be quite surprised. I'm not going to give away too much, but do check out that review, guys. It's going to be coming soon. Cool, cool. So, without further ado, it's my turn. My God, if you haven't had enough of me speaking already, I'm, I'm going to be talking about my game. So, um, believe it or not, this was a game on my wife spotted on the internet, uh, and she's got more and more into the board games uh, since we actually got together. Um, when we met, um, she was she, her friend was said to go pick the geek, and she did. So she met me, and she got into board games, which is never a bad thing. <laughs> so Jaws. Um, it's been out for a little while. Uh, I can't remember exactly when it came out, but it's been done by Ravensburger. Um, and one of the concerns with these kind of games when they're following a film, a bit like the, the recent Jurassic Park board game release, sometimes I think people have the fear that uh, some of these games are going to be too plot heavily based. Um, and this one isn't. Okay, it has uh, an element uh, Act One and Act Two, but Act One is when you everyone's on Amnesty Island, um, and you the shark has to uh, basically chop as many humans as possible, um, and the humans have to stop them. <laughs> and then once you get to a certain point, you've either managed to tag two barrels on a, um, a the shark or the shark eats all the humans, you then flip over to Act 2, where you have the orca, and you've got to stop it from being sunk. Um, or, so the shark's got to sink you, or eat all the humans, or you just need to take out the shark. It, really does, someone, does someone control the shark, just out of interest, or is it... Yes, so it's, like... it's one of these silent um, player... Uh, oh, roles. okay. Mm -hmm. So if you've played things like um, Scotland Yard, where you have a secret person, the movement of the shark is done in secret in, in Act 1 when you've got Amity Island, um, and then it's, it's still got secret elements in Act 2. So you can see here on screen it has what's called resurface cards. So the shark will have four resurface tokens and can only appear in those zones. So you don't know where it's going to appear. You've got to kind of anticipate its movements and think about actions that you want to do. So it's it's a, it's very clever. It's nicely balanced. It's a, it's a lovely little game. Um, we 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 played a, a game in in just over an hour before doing the live stream this evening. So um, it was it was good. Uh, I managed to beat the shark this time. However, the wife won the previous game with the shark. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> So, but no, it's a, it's a great game. Um, uh, I really was surprised by it. Uh, I picked it uh, because, you know, like I say, the wife saw it and wanted it. She likes sharks. So, um, Does it seem quite balanced with who's, who's playing as the shark and who's playing as the humans? Because there's a lot of games where they have like a secret sort of, you know, shark mm -hmm. or similar and that actually they're at a massive disadvantage. So it's, yeah. yeah. All the other way around. Where yeah, all the other way around. Yeah, exactly. Um, and this one actually seemed quite balanced. Um, what you, while you have the element of the fact that the shark has got secret movements, um, the, the, the ways in which you can discover movements using barrels you've put in the water as a sensor. So while a shark can pass through the area, it, and it'll tell you which motion tracker it's activated, it, can tell, it doesn't have to tell you the order in which they're done. So it gives you uh, a bigger degree of guessing and they also have to tell you how many people they chomped uh, and where but of course you don't know where they could be because they could be elsewhere um, so it really does balance out very well um, and with two player um, the second you know, the human player plays all three characters so you've got um, Hot Ho Hooper um, uh, who's the captain what's his name again now I've forgotten his name it's been so long uh, it's on the back of the box. Hang on a second. I've got it right here. It is great. Quint, Hooper, and of course, Brody. Mm -hmm. um, and they all have unique character cards as well, which give you that balance. But what I really like about this is, is the, uh, the element in which you've won that first act. So if the shark wins uh, and kills all the humans, uh, or eats like 12 humans, the shark gets lots of shark cards. And the humans are in a disadvantage, they get less cards. So when you go to tip it opposite scale, so if you manage to tip two, you know, get two barrels packed in that first round on the shark, um, you can then, um, it, you, you have more chance of getting more cards at that point. 
So it balances out. You've got this kind of scale uh, of where it goes, and that uh, that's what gives you the character balance. Now, of course, if you've got more players, you've got more people to think about the tactics. Um, but there's lots to do because I know exactly what you mean, Rebecca, when you're saying um, uh, about these games. You know, sometimes when you're playing with other players, you think you know it, you only got like two actions you can actually do. Um, yeah. And actually, with this, uh, each of the individual characters have very unique actions. Brody is the only one can actually go to the shop and get barrels, and he has to he can put them at locations where the other two can pick them up. Um, and the only two, the boat, the two boat guys, Cooper and um, the other chap, um, are the only ones that can pick up barrels that are already put have been out in the water. So certain, certain people have got certain things to do, and you've got to work together harmoniously, and it just works. Mm. Uh, so um, it's definitely one. It, it's and, and actually, I'm not done a, a, a video review of this yet, but there will be one coming. Um, but I will say, I will allude to this now that this is probably one of the best games I've bought for under thirty pounds for a long time. I'm glad it's actually a good movie game because I've played mm. my fair share of bad movie games. Like I bought the uh, Bill and Ted Excellent Adventure game at UK Games yeah. Expo a couple of years ago, and it was it was trash. Yeah, yeah. and it's a it's a common thing if they take like a movie or a TV show IP, it's usually just a cash grab, really cheap. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So it's actually nice to see Jaws was done justice there. Yeah, I mean, I, say, I love your, the original review of Labyrinth. Wonderful artwork, yeah. but yeah. not much substance to the back oh, of the, the game. Pre the presentation was brilliant. But yeah, no. Oh, yeah. no Stunning game. Looks amazing. The minis I mean, were beautiful. Yeah, the I mean, it's, crud. It's, it really was crud. Yeah. So some of my favourite games I've got are based off TV shows or films. So I'm always really mm. wary about them. But when they're really good, they're really good, especially if they fit yeah. the theme, which this looks so like. So it's a bit like the Sons so, of Anarchy game. It's chalk yeah. and cheese. That, yeah, that I mean, some of them work really well. Some of them just mm. they yeah. railroad you to to boredom. Yeah, yeah. Good. Um, and I've got a question about this game, Chris. I mean, how many times yeah. did you say we've got to get a bigger boat? How many times did you say that? Twice. 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 Only twice. Okay. Twice. Only twice. One I'm first disappointed. night and one tonight. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, I think that's going to have to be a counter in the review. <laughs> yeah, there will be a counter in the review when we actually do a proper playthrough. So it should be good. It should be good. So, uh, without further ado, shall we move on? Uh, has anyone got any comments out there in internet land? Uh, nothing more than the inquiry about what 4X means. I'm sure we will get more in the uh, download in the meantime. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure in the meantime we'll move on, shall we? So, um, we've got... Oh, we, he's just disappeared as well. Somebody's we... just come to the door at like 8 o'clock at night and I've got no idea who it is, but he is just coming back. Um, okay, no, also, I stall for him. No, um, no, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. This is what this is about, you know. Uh, this is the fun of when oh, you're doing back. live streams. He's back. There he is. Oh, that's all good. Good time. The pest, the pesky people that knock on the door at 8 o'clock at night. Right? Yeah, it was delivering a package as well. He needs a break. 8 o'clock? Wow. And a better job. Wow. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the game uh, that I've uh, chosen for this uh, discussion is Flanks, which... Uh, I can, it's literally comes in such a small box, I can hold it up here and I can get it really close to the iPad, uh, iPad camera and you can see it. Um, but basically, yeah, it's, uh, as you can probably tell from the URL, it is a one minute game. It doesn't take very long. Um, this is the sort of thing that I like because I like to keep a game of some sort around in my bag when I'm traveling, um, just to be able to pass the time, um, either by playing it myself or by uh, playing a game with whoever I'm travelling with, which is invariably but not always better. Um, <laughs> but yeah, the concept of it um, is that it's two players and you've got uh, one deck of black cards that looks something like this and one deck of white cards. And if I pick one at random, you'll be able to see there, uh, and my fave, perfect. Um, sorry. Uh, right. But basically, got a card with a shape in the middle and uh, two coloured semicircles on either side, which can be either green or pink. Uh, and the idea is that you uh, play, there's no turns, you play with your, uh, against your other player to basically box them in. Uh, and there's three pretty simple rules. Um, you have to, the card that you play has to be touching, you can come back in now, 
figured it out. Uh, <laughs> the card that you play has to be touching, uh, matching the semicircles there. It has to touch edge to edge with one of your own cards and corner to corner, at least corner to corner with your opponents. Um, and then the shapes also have to fit like that. So they have to match whatever the edge is. And yeah, it's as simple as you keep playing tiles um, until you box in your opponent. Um, and it does take, I mean, a minute is maybe a bit uh, generous, Generous, but <laughs> it, it, it takes less than five minutes to play. Play it on the train, yeah. play it in your break at work, whatever you want to do. It takes less than a minute to learn. It does. Well, I don't think I made it quite that succinctly, but... Well, yeah, yeah, it was well, still less than a minute. Premise, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, in terms of... A bit like Go. A minute, to, a minute to learn, a decade to master. <laughs> exactly. There you go, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, one thing I should mention is you can only hold... You only have a hand of three, and you have to then... If you can't play any, you discard and draw again. So you can't just have all the cards face up in front of you. You do have to... Yeah, there's a keep luck it, element. You'd have to keep it. There's a luck element, but you also have to keep it relatively fast. So there's some strategizing in it, which I quite like. Um, but you can't. It's not one of those games where strategy can cripple you and you sit around for ages uh, while someone else takes a turn because there the are no turns. Don't get paralysis. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's the thing. <laughs> well, okay. So how did you come across this one then? Uh, I found it uh, in a clearance section on a games website. I think it was Zatu. Um, oh, okay. But yeah, that's the sort of thing that I tend to browse for little hidden gems uh, like that, because that's the sort of thing that uh, I enjoy. And yeah, I, I think I picked this up for somewhere in the region of two to three pounds, which was significantly clearance from its original price. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I imagine that the full price, uh, if you're crazy enough to pay it, uh, it's probably only about a tenner. So see, that's not unreasonable at all. And I know it's quite been an interesting premise. I quite like the look of yes. that. I might yeah, check that great, one out myself. Great travel yeah. game, Balak. It looks awesome. Yeah. yeah. And as you were saying, like even when you're at games nights, if you're waiting around for other people, yeah. if you're waiting for your entire party to turn up or whatever it waiting is, waiting for George to read a rule book. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you you could literally you could play a game of this while someone else is having a turn if you wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. Yeah. No, I like games like that, and I, and I know exactly what you mean when you say you're waiting for someone to read a rule book. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, George. <laughs> yeah, just send, just send them all to George. He loves it. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. Fantastic. Of course, the oh, thing which annoys everyone is once I've read it once, I don't even need to look at it again. <laughs> yeah, it's quite impressive. All right, so show off your superpowers. I <laughs> I, 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 did, I, did use, I used to be the rules guy but George usurped me <laughs> when it was discovered I was playing Eclipse wrong for like two years or something <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to be fair I did have to really read the rule book very carefully to find that yeah yes you did <laughs> cover to cover back to back <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> every page <laughs> brilliant okay well thanks very much for covering that I really like the look of that uh, I might have to get I might have to get myself a copy of that. Uh, looks really good. It is a really uh, nice little game. Hmm. I think anyone could probably enjoy it. Yeah, well, I think I, I like simple premise games where the where the, 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 the concept of it is quick to pick up, uh, and then you can just play Othello, Go, things like this. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. Flux. I love, I love Flux. Yeah, Flux I like is Flux. A good one out there. Yeah, but that can go on a bit too long sometimes. It depends yeah. on the version. Yeah, yeah, it does yeah. If you look at Flux original, I, yeah, you can get that done quite quick. I, I have a love hate relationship with Flux. <laughs> yeah. After yeah. after playing a four hour game one time, I think people were just deliberately trying to end all it. hours did, on Flux. Yeah. Did, yeah. did you not at least want to forfeit and maybe after hours? Yeah, I, I was trying to help other people. It? I was trying to help other people win just to end the game. I've been there with Flux, trying to get other people to help help other people to yeah. win. Yeah, it doesn't always work. <laughs> Shoots you in the foot. <laughs> Anywho, anywho, so we'll, we'll move on to the next one. Uh, so, Dan, you, you, you've broken the mould a little bit, mate, haven't you? Broken the moulds, yeah, I've gone digital. It's the new age. <laughs> uh, yeah, but, well, basically, just as a quick summary, um, because of obviously since the epidemic and everything and since i made the decision to reproduce uh, my ability to play physical board games is probably is drastically reduced and it will probably remain so for the next 18 years or so um so <laughs> in the meantime to scratch the itch i've been uh checking out 
digital board games, which is kind of ironic because before I really got into modern board games, I was playing video games usually. And then I kind of went onto board games to have a break from video games, get away from the screen all the time. And now it's gone full circle. I'm now playing video games off board games. So <laughs> You recognise their vast superiority. <laughs> exactly. Just embrace them in a new digital era. Well, they're, they're, just, they're, they're just more polished, but just quick games you can have and you can still be sociable. Like just chat like this while playing a game. It's, yeah, it's all good. So uh, you don't this... have to be. That's the that's the benefit. There's no, <laughs> no requirement to be sociable. You can be no. as social as you feel. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you can just mute everybody if you want to. You've got. You, it's hard to do that in real life. It is. Uh, so, um, yeah. So the game I've been playing uh, quite a lot this last month or so is the digital, uh, the Steam version of Lords of Waterdeep. Um, I've got the physical version of this game as well. It's one of my favourites doesn't hit the table as much as i'd like but I'd, i've always got a fondness for it it's um set in the D, &D uh universe but you don't need to know anything about D, &D. it's uh, uh it's basically it's a worker placement game yeah. and it's and it's a nice chilled paced game you can just take your time just think about your moves there's no dice so there's very little luck it's um it's all about you pick up quests and they ask you for certain resources so you have to move your little meeple guys take them to buildings around the city and acquire those resources and complete the quest. And the strategy is basically just beating your opponents to get the resources you need to complete your quest before your opponents do theirs. Yeah. Um, and you can, um, you can play cards on each other, which are usually quite funny, just mess up each other's plans. Uh, yeah. You've got like um, secret identities, which you, you're, you play as a lord of Waterdeep and you get bonus points for doing certain type of quests. Like, yeah, uh, and we have an example on screen. Yep, a good example. Thank you, Chris. So that guy there basically gets extra points for piety and warfare quests. So if you pick them up at the end of the game, you can't up how many of those you've done and you get bonus points on top of that. So quite often it looks like someone's winning because yep. you get, uh, but then at the end you reveal your identity, you get extra points and you can sometimes leapfrog, leapfrog people, which is quite funny when it happens. And it happens a lot, surprisingly. Uh, yeah. you, think yeah. you've, you think you've got away with it and then someone just get more completed quests than you and you're like double yeah yeah it's um i've always had fun with this game and it's got a couple yeah. of great expansions as well it's um it's really cheap on steam it's only a fiver so i recommend you guys get it <laughs> you fiver? yeah I, I recommend um it just even if you don't buy the physical version just check out the digital version Yep. It's so like, available on android and ios as well yep yeah it, it is it's uh, very impressive i've played some kind of uh, board game ports uh, sorry digital board game ports and they'd be quite sloppily done but this one is quite well polished and even the AI is pretty good if you play against the computer um, it's actually decent it's not that stupid yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the AI has kicked my butt on a couple of occasions but yeah. I like the screen as well yeah, it. yeah it's, it's, it's very well done I mean it, it does make a few mistakes it's not perfect like it sometimes forgets about its bonus points that kind of thing um, yeah, they get obsessed with completing a quest for its even, point value rather than thinking long term. Yeah, yeah, they don't they don't think about their bonus objectives at the end, so you, no. it can never really compete with a human some of the time. <laughs> but, I think the other thing with Lords of Waterdeep is knowing the value of plot quests that some of yeah. them are worth so much more. Like yeah. if you get recruit lieutenant in the first couple of turns, oh, yeah, that brilliant. just completely changes yeah. the game. J just to specify for everyone, plot quests are basically if you complete them they um, give you a permanent boost in other areas for the rest of the game. So if you had to pick up orange cubes, which are meant to be warriors or whatever, <laughs> if, yeah, you completed a, if you completed a plot quest that doubled the amount of warriors you picked up each time, then basically you just have like a warrior generating machine and you could just kind of get more efficient at completing quests. Yeah. And it's actually, by the end of the game, everyone's usually got a good little points generating system going and you can just see your score getting higher and higher and higher. As your little, so uh, I remember my favourite game, not Sue's favourite game, but you know yeah. we have to live with these things. Uh, it's like I was... a little perpetual engine sometimes, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's an engine builder basically. You're making like a points generator. Sorry, what were you saying, George? What was Sue doing? Yeah, my fa favourite combination. I had the plot quests that give you additional, uh, uh, um, blah blah blah. Get get the things. The mishap cards that whenever you get play a mad or get a magic token. That you gain points whenever you play them, yeah. and that you, you did it, and it was just this cycle of just doom that I just had this rolling supply of cards yeah. that no one could, could stop, <laughs> yeah. and it was just I, I, you just watch the point count just tally up. I know I, I've seen people, yeah, they they do combo really well, 
Like I played against someone who had an ability that gave them money whenever they got rogues or thieves, and they got rogues whenever they got money. So basically, it just kind of spiraled. Um, yeah, I've played that combo as well. It's because <laughs> it, of course it's the there's so many options to get either of them that you just yeah. um, you create re, it just piles up resources before you even know what's happened. Yeah. So yeah. In summary, it's a very good uh, digital adaption. It's one of the best I've played. I've got loads of them now. I should show you my Steam library. I've got loads, and this is one of my faves. Um, so, as somebody who has both the physical and digital uh, versions, <laughs> that being you, I don't have either. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> would me. you recommend yep. that some? So, say somebody is watching this stream and they think oh, I'm really interested in that. Would you recommend they get the digital or the physical? Um, it's it depends how often you get. Games on the table, really. Um, I always love the physical, but the physical is going to be more expensive. It's going to be like 40 quid, 30, 40 quid. I don't know. I haven't checked the price recently. No longer in print. So it is no, hard oh, to there we go. Really. And the digital is only a fiver. So I would suggest everyone try It's currently £3.69 on the Play Store for your phone. Oh, brilliant. Uh, just... Yeah. Even better. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I've only played the Steam version. So I don't know what it's like on um, your phone or anything. Well, well this is the case. So I've played this on the iPad. Uh, when we've actually taken this on holiday on an yeah. iPad, uh, and me and the missus have actually sat just sitting in, you know, outside, enjoying, yeah. you know, um, and just uh, having a drink and playing this and just passing the iPad back yeah. and forth. It's great. It has a replay mode, so the person can see what you've done without giving away too much. So you know what actions mm -hmm. they've done. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's great. Uh, we love the tabletop version, but we also like the digital version. Yeah. And obviously, there's, there's no setup in digital as well. You don't need to no. worry about just play, yeah, just, just play new game, and you don't have to tie, tidy up afterwards. And the few yeah, randomized elements anyway. actually are properly randomized, whereas any game that actually requires shuffling, human shuffling is never as good a randomization as a computer. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm not allowed to shuffle anymore from an ID. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> After some of the results I pull. Yeah. Well, um, in, so in, uh, the expansion is available. On... Sorry, Sadam. Oh. Sorry, I didn't mean to talk over you and you, Chris. You still there? You it's because he's got Lords of Waterdeep running in the background. That's the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey guys. You can't oh. cope with it. Yeah, no, it's a great game um, and uh, a nice overview on uh, the digital version. So thanks very much for that, Dan. That's cracking. Um, I'm back. I don't know if you guys can hear me. Yeah, yes, we can. We can. Yeah. That's better. Uh, yeah. You all froze for me there, so I was just prattling along to myself for ages. <laughs> I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I, I'm honestly not playing Lords of Waterdeep in the background as we do this uh, stream. I'm honestly not. <laughs> okay. uh, no, it's Carcassonne instead. <laughs> It's Carcassonne, which is yeah. also available on Steam. I just want to point out. <laughs> and other platforms. Yeah. <laughs> and other platforms. Yeah, I'm not sponsored by Steam, I promise. No, no, no. It's all good. But no, guys, do check it out. And if you want to uh, you know, look at any of the board games mentioned today, there will be some uh, links and some information being put on the website. So do check out www.doalg.co.uk and you will see that. So thanks very much for that. We're covering that. Um, what we like to do now is just this section and go, what's new on Kickstarter, guys? So we have got one of these games by Sinister Fish. It's called Streets. And I've got a little video to show everyone. So hopefully you can all hear this sound. Bear with me. The city is the place to start a business right now. After the big head was discovered, the tourist industry is booming. Start a hotel or a souvenir shop or maybe cater to the hipsters with a microbrewery or an art gallery. You could invest in affordable homes for all the families moving in or maybe a fashion outlet for classy shoppers. The city is expanding, reinventing itself, and attracting all kinds of people. Let's build the city together, building by building. Streets is a tile laying game where players build a city together, one building at a time. Every street is a small tableau of buildings with values that depend on their location. 
Wooden meeples generate extra income and represent different demographics of people. These are hipsters, parents, shoppers and tourists. Scoring of a street is triggered when it becomes enclosed by other streets on both sides. When that happens, players sell their buildings and collect money. This also makes the people in the street move to other buildings matching their demographic, increasing their value. Street is a game for one to five players that takes 30 to 60 minutes to play. It's really easy to teach, making it an excellent family game. The variety of buildings and the way they combine gives the game a lot of replayability. It's a tune. All right, <laughs> the city is. Oh, again. Oh. again, again, <laughs> again, again. <laughs> so that that that's a, a, a look at Cinnamon Street. So, what do you guys think? What do you think about the initial kind of look at this? I am super excited because I got Villagers on Kickstarter um, when that came out, and oh, I villages. really enjoyed it. You've played Villagers, yes, I'm, oh. <laughs> I'm doing a bit. Oh, in a discussion. <laughs> Um, so in villages, you basically, the, the concept is that you have a village and you want to populate it with people that are sort of bringing economic activity into your village and you can sort of upgrade them. There's different chains of, of sort of skill. So you can upgrade a forester all the way to like a woodworker or something or a like carpenter that. Or carpenter or something or a yeah. boat maker, I think. Isn't um, it? So villages is, is really good as well. I'm looking forward to streets. I have backed it at the deluxe tier because I wanted the screen printed meeples. Um, <laughs> but they they do currently have on their Kickstarter, as you can probably see in the picture there, um, a couple of tiers where you can get both of the games bundled together if you missed out on Villagers. Um, yep. So tiers starting from £53 include both games. Uh, base game is £23. So not a bad deal. Bad. That isn't bad at all. I mean... I quite like. I'm, I'm quite tempted to back that just for the base game myself because this actually really does look interesting. Uh, I like concepts like this where you've got worker placement, uh, uh, and so you know something unique and different, something I don't have already, uh, is uh, always an interest. You know, something positive in my book. Yeah, villagers is very good in my opinion, and streets, to be honest, doesn't look dramatically different it basically looks like one is feudalism and one is capitalism but the <laughs> the, the thing with streets is it, it that you can tell just from the tr little trailer that we just watched that the way that work placement works is very slightly different enough for it to be an interesting game but also enough for it to be familiar if you played the last one yeah yeah i think there is a level of familiarity um, and if also, if the deluxe tier is anything like it was for villagers, the components are going to be top tier. you got a coin mm. chest with Yeah, villagers. I've got a coin chest with villagers. With like wooden coins. Yeah, and... wooden coins, really, really nice quality. Um, and they are doing wooden mummy, like little fake banknote wooden things with streets, which are actually okay. useful for other games as well. Nice. Mm, yeah, it's nice when you've got tokens that you can use in other games. So, yeah, no, it looks really good. As I am, again, it's another one of these ones that they thought it through and they've got a solo player too. Yeah, yeah, Villagers had it too. It came with sort of a separate uh, mini deck of cards to add into the normal set um, to just sort of enhance the gameplay. Um, what I do also find interesting about Streets is that it's touted as being teachable in under five minutes, which is always impressive. We'll see. Oh, Dan, is there a challenge there to do a rules <laughs> video uh, in under five minutes? Oh, don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> so it could be a rules off between Dan and George. No, George, the, the rules like lawyer rat, doesn't do anything like quickly. <laughs> he analyzes in detail. So it's the, the old joke. Only a lawyer has the audacity to call a 10,000 word document a brief. <laughs> Okay, so George folded really quickly there, Dan, so it's up to you. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Just six months later, I'll pick him apart and tell him all the things he did wrong. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a, a, a cool-off period. I've got a six-month cool-off period before I get corrected. <laughs> <laughs> no, fantastic. And thank you for uh, bringing it into our attention, Rebecca. It looks really good. 
That's all right. I've been following the progress on it for, well, ever since Sinister Fish, uh, I'm on their mailing list, ever since they said, oh, we've, we've got a new game in the works. I thought, oh, brilliant. How much money do you want? Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> Not a lot, by the looks of it. It's a good name for a company as well, Sinister Fish. Yeah. I like it. I think they are actually Lincoln based as well. Oh, even which better. Is, uh, even more interesting. Oh, wow. There is at least, okay, I think there's cool. a guy called Dave at Sinister Fish, who I think is like the main guy, and he's based in Lincoln. So. Dave That's Clark, fine. yes. Support yes. local businesses. That's what it's about. We like to support local businesses. And we are. We are all geeks from, from, from the Lincolnshire area. For, for how long is another question. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic, guys. Uh, wonderful. Brilliant. Uh, you know, I, I, I like to say, I, I like the look of that. And of course, all the information uh, about this game, guys, will be available on the website. So do check it out. And also do check out Kickstarter and check out Street and Villagers. Wonderful. So uh, can I go on to the next slide without restarting the video? <laughs> cool. Oh, God. Damn. <laughs> It's time. I, I've lost the jingle. Okay, you've lost the jingle. It. Oh, no. Yeah, we used to have a jingle for this. Our long-term fans are going to be devastated. That was the... Oh, <laughs> so, what have you got for us, Dan? Oh, well, this, this is just a running joke where I used to just give a random top tip from whatever game I've been playing. So, I thought I'd just say one about Lords of Waterdeep while I'm currently obsessed okay. with it. Don't underestimate being player number one, especially in high player number games. You always get your first dibs on which room you go in first. It's a very underrated ability. And one of your room, one of the rooms lets you steal first player. Um, it's probably yeah, not I less... remember using it well. Yeah, it's probably less important in a two player game. But if you've got three and definitely four, you don't want to be last player. That's I my always underrate going to first player because when mm. we played uh, Lords of Waterdeep with uh, Gregor's parents, uh, and I was like, "Oh, it doesn't matter being first player." I came in dead last by at yeah. least twenty-five points. It's it's surprisingly it, it is It's very it is underrated as well. I would say sometimes yeah. it depends on what your strategy is because some, if you're the builder, you, it's almost essential that you're first player just because you can't. There's yeah. so few opportunities for you to do it. Yeah, there's only yeah. one place you can buy buildings, so you have to get in there first. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, I would definitely... say another game where first play is really important and is often underrated is Eclipse. Getting first dibs of that critical technology at the right time yep. can really yep. change the game. Yep. As soon as they pop yep. out, grab them first. There is one thing I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say about this for a second then, Dan. So um, I, uh, I, uh, we have a house rule that is the... We call it uber hard mode. So you can't do this on the digital copy, but you can do no. this on the real copy. Yeah. So uber hard mode is basically where you get minus points for uncompleted quests. You oh, that is hard difficulty. God. Because it stops people from, you know, just keep going to quests, quest yeah. decks and pulling quests that they need for their for their goal. Mm -hmm. How the do you decide how many? How do you decide how many points you deduct? Is it the same as the points on the quest, or is it how yeah, same principle as ticket oh, to you ride? But it, you get yeah. minus. So if it's worth twenty points, you, you get harsh. minus twenty points for not completing it. I'll say the first time I played this variant with them, I really peed Chris off because uh, we did the uh, mystery quest thing. <laughs> uh, you all get one and i we dumped him with a 25 point quest on the last turn right. we had no hope of oh, doing massive <laughs> exactly that, that but is that, very that harsh brings in that e extra tactic so if you haven't tried it give it a go it mm -hmm. makes laws of water deep that bit that's, tougher. that's one thing that's the downside with digital games it's a uh, you can't really do any home rules um yeah. So I suppose that's worth pointing out. Well, it depends downside. on how good you are at coding. Yeah, if you, if you do a bit of hacking <laughs> on the side, then sure. But no, that's, that's an interesting one. If I want to play extreme water deep yeah. next time, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll bear that in mind. You can make it even tougher on yourself and play two character, character boards as well. Two lords. Yeah, God. we've done that. We've played two lords, dual lords. You guys are like... Um, Extreme Lord of Waterdeep, as I thought I had it bad. <laughs> yeah, no, no, we, 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 we went through a spate of playing it solid for like a month. I would say we've done that as well, where because there's only so many times you can play it two player and it feel the same, whereas once you yeah. start playing it multiple players per person, mm. it, it just changes the dynamic, especially well, with, with it where because you get fewer meeples the more players you have in the game, mm. so it just changes the way you have to play. 
Yeah, sounds yeah. interesting. Have you guys tried the expansions? Sorry to harp on about this game so much, but have you tried the expansions? Love yeah. it. Yeah, because no. the, the expansions are really good for what they. So your anyway. top tip for the week is play Lords of Waterdeep. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> much. <laughs> but make sure you go first if you do. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, it's just... But most importantly, play it. Yeah, yeah. I, I just I thought that because when I play against people, I've been playing against people online quite a lot at the moment. The steal the first player token is usually quite an underrated room, and yeah. I just that was my top tip. Exactly. No, but that's not that's it's not a bad thing. You know, uh, there's one thing that we pride ourselves about this 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 stream and this show is we we're not always going to be talking about the ooh, brand new shiny games. We oh, yeah. will highlight some of those games that you guys have probably not seen for ten years. So uh, it's not always about what's new. Uh, so if you've got any games that you'd like to uh, as to kind of play through and have a go, if we've not got them, uh, do we always like donations? Send them them to us, and we'll, we'll talk about them on the stream. So, so more than happy to do that. So that kind of brings us to the end of our show, guys. Wow, what a great first show! Uh, um, it's been absolutely incredible. I, I don't know about you lot, but I've really enjoyed it. What, what, you, what, what about you lot? Yeah, it was fun. Good chats. What a good time. Yeah. Good. Looking Wonderful. forward to the next one. Yeah, fantastic. So the, the next show is on the 2nd of October at 8 o'clock. So guys, you know, get used to the, the, the times because we're going to try and be consistent with these. So if people are wanting to watch live and participate in the show, then obviously you can also check out the streaming schedule, which is also on the website, which is www.doalg.co.uk. Um, and do, of course, uh, like and subscribe and follow us. And uh, we'll hope to see you and speak to you again very soon. So stay safe, take care. And I'd like to say thanks to everyone on the team for joining me live tonight. Cheers, guys. Stay safe. See you later, everyone. Bye. Bye. <laughs>